So in terms of blood chemistry, the initial creatinine is 1.21 and the sodium is normal and with low or um, hypokalemic. So yun, naging okay naman yung creatinine and then saka nagawa yung CTA. So yung kanina yung 1.00 yung sa creatinine. Next. And then sa uh, urinalysis naman, wala namang, ang remarkable ay yung ating RBC na 50 to 60, which implies possibly um, hematory or bleeding. Then sugar is positive 1. So pwede yung meron siyang um, DM type 2 and erythrocytes. So talagang um, indicative of bleeding. So let's move on with the pathophysiology. So my pathophysiology is based from the pathophysiology by Bullock and then with in combination ng mga med surge. So ang ginawa ko dito, ang type ang style niya is we have the predisposing and precipitating and then the pathophysiology itself with the inferences at the side and also the symptoms. Then so predisposing factors natin, we have age. So as we all know that as a person ages so, nagkakaroon siya lalo ng increased um, risk for for diseases due to pwede mo ba by immune system and doon na lumalabas yung mga different illnesses. So, yun yung parang um, factors sa age. Then, history of hypertension, genetics sa family. Precipitating or the the sim or the factors that can be changed um, are the DM type 2. So, the patient has it and then drug abuse drug abuse or shabu use and then hypertensive shot. So those are the precipitating factors. So our etiology is multifactorial and diverse because we do not have um, a soul, soul etiology in here. Then structural aberration. So it, those factors or diverse, um, diverse etiologies just come into one uh, main concept. So, nagkakaroon ka ng structural aberrations or abnormalities with your cerebrovasculature. Then, it leads into... So, then it talks about integrity of the internal elastic lamina na compromise with associated elastic defects in the adjacent layers of the tonica media and adventition or the layers of the blood vessel. Then, nagkakaroon ka ng muscular defects in the blood vessel sa... sa membrane niya, and minimal support of adjacent brain parenchyma, then nagkakaroon ka ng increased pathologic potential of chronic hemodynamic stress in the arterial wall. Thus, if there is a consistent stress or um, problem with the you know, hemodynamics, then nagkakaroon ka ng weakening. Then after that, focal turbulence and discontinuity of the normal architecture uh, blood vessel bifurcation, so nag-lead ka sa propensi, propensity of saccular aneurysm formation. So, do not tayo perform because of the weakened vasculature. Signs and symptoms, possibly the four signs and symptoms kanina, then analgesic and rest for treatment, cerebral or cerebral blood vessel ballooning, or the aneurysm itself may lead to rupture if BP is con consistently or constantly increased. Thus, will form into subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, our inferences, it is called CTA, which may <clears throat> give us um, CVA bleed or stroke-like symptoms. Then, these are the signs and symptoms, the most common, the unconsciousness or GCS3, episodes of seizures, the BP, the intubation, the pupils. Oh, oh, of course, we have to check this for intracranial pressure, the preferential gaze, the hanging paralysis, and the classic extremities. So those are the signs and symptoms. And then, the subarachnoid hemorrhage. So we'll talk about, I have subdivided the uh, the explanation into systems so that we can fully understand it. So in terms of hema, it may affect the WBC count. So as we have talked about a while ago, due to increase, uh, increase due to CNS impairment. So that's one of the biggest factors. Thus, it will um, indicate infection. So, meron kang 29 point, so from 21.8 to 29.5 na CBC and the WBC. So, treatment is yung antibiotic natin which, which are uh, superior sign and your pictazone. So, CMS, so this is our focus. 
um, nagkakaroon siya ng diffuse or focal forms of vasospasm which leads to or which may lead to ischemia and infarction. The CT scan shows diffuse cerebral edema so that's why we are giving mannitol secondary to hemorrhage leading to hydrocephalus or intraventricular hemorrhage or we're in nakita natin ito sa CT scan and if you all uh, if you have all these you have a change in LOC or nagpakomatose yung pasyon sa so cardio naman secondary to disruption of your hemos hemostasis the heart will compensate to enhance oxygenation thus giving you sinus tachycardia of 100s to 120s may lead to arrhythmias or left ventricular hypertrophy because of the over functioning of the left ventricle and then may lead to failure and death Respira respiratory because of our quantine affectation nakakaroon tayo ng depression sa control ng respiration thus giving us um, damage sensory and motor analysis or coordination on respiratory function so kaya sa na injury and so after this one after this one sa respi respiratory dahil meron kang altered um, sensory and motor function in terms of uh, respiration nagkakaroon ka ng decreased O2 supply in the brain tissues or in brain parenchyma thus giving you cerebral hypoxia then nagkakaroon ka ng irreversible brain damage and uh, pag meron ka ng brain damages magkakaroon ka na syempre definitely ng poor control and function over the whole body system so organ failure etc so death and then musculoskeletal rapid loss of brain function due to disturbance of blood supply to the brain and then the affected area of the brain cannot function well so ang example natin dito um, pag sa musculoskeletal ito yung mga uh, parts ng brain na affected possibly affected the cerebellum is for equilibrium and balance so if we have one cerebellar infarct so more likely ito yung affected sa kanya equilibrium and balance then primary motor cortex posterior parietal supplementary motor area they these um, control your mus motor muscle movements coordination and complex movement so possibly affected siya and then thalamus integrates in both incoming or outgoing motor fibers thus kapag may mga affected area and the function nagkakaroon din ng impaired somatic function and yung impaired somatic function will lead to your hemiparesis, which is our sign, sign sa pasyente. So, ang treatment natin dito, syempre first, we have to deal with the problem. Yung to restore the cerebral function. So, ang, ang magiging problem mo or, or, or complications mo pag mayroon ang hemiparesis, syempre bed sores, bone contractures, and pneumonia due to accumulation of secretions. Treatment suggested by neurosurgeon is scraping or coiling. So, our neurosurgeon, yun yung nilagay niya sa kanya consultation sheet. So, kanyang suggestion. But, it did not it did not pursue due to uh, poor prognosis. So, sa kanya, pag below GCS6, hindi na masyadong um, operable. So, hindi siya matara. So, that's all. These are my references. So, I hope that everyone had um, marami tayong natutunan and um, I'll be looking forward for your questions and we hope that we'll have a good discussion over the next. Thank you. Eh, tapos din. Oh, sabi na. Okay.